The 1950s were graced by a woman renowned and revered by all walks of society for her skill, fame, and good looks. Commenting on her prominence, President Eisenhower claimed, I'd know you anywhere. Famed dancer and performer Gypsy Rose Lee called her the most beautiful woman in sports. Swimmer Johnny Weissmuller asserted that she is the greatest woman swimmer of all time, maybe of either sex, and it's time she got credit for it. But who is she? Would you describe yourself as somewhat athletic? Yes, I think so. Do you swim much? Yes, I swim. Uh, ever swim um, places like the English Channel? Occasionally. You're Florence Chadwick, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> Florence May Chadwick was born on November 8, 1918, in San Diego, California, to parents Mary and Richard Chadwick. Richard, originally a police detective, left the force to open a restaurant in tandem with his wife. Growing up, Florence loved to swim in the San Diego Bay. Mary and Richard quickly recognized her talent, and at six years old, Florence became the youngest person to swim across the San Diego Harbor. Only four years later, she won the six-mile San Diego Bay Channel Race, the youngest champion at the time and the first child to win. Florence was well known in local competitions, but she struggled for recognition on the national stage. At 13 years old, she finished second to Eleanor Holm and fell short of qualifying for the U.S. national team and going on to the Olympics in her home state. Four years later, Holm became famous for attending a cocktail party aboard the 1936 Olympic ship to Germany and was disqualified from the team. Four years ago at the Olympic Games in Los Angeles, Eleanor Holm created a sensation by winning the 100 meters backstroke in world record time. And today she's created another sensation by being expelled from the US team. She's said to have disobeyed training instructions. In 1932, Eleanor said, I went out in front and stayed out in front. And now she's just out. Let's hope not for long. After failing to earn a spot in the Olympics, Florence chose to swim for her high school instead, graduating the same year as the Olympics in Berlin. She continued her education at San Diego State College, then Southwestern University of Law in Los Angeles, and finally Balboa Law, but never finished college. After the Second World War broke out, Florence directed and performed in aquatic shows for the military. Aquacades were all the rage in the 1930s, and their popularity spread into live shows and movies. These performances emphasized the beauty and grace of women in the water. To learn these routines, the girls spend at least four evenings a week in the water. Florence's talent in the pool secured her a spot in a film with the legendary Esther Williams. An AAU national champion in multiple events, Williams is the most successful star of the Aquacades. During Chadwick's youth, women's roles in athletics were limited to performances like Williams or a chance to make the national team in Olympic years. But Florence chose also to help young swimmers, using her talent to find a job at La Jolla Beach and Tennis Club where she taught swimming. While this was her first coaching experience, Chadwick would spend much of the rest of her life cultivating generations of American swimmers across the country. Mm -hmm. 1944, as soon as I was here, I looked for a place to uh, swim and uh, settled on the San Diego Club. And there I found that uh, Florence Shadwick was uh, forming a swimming team. And she had a racing team and she had a show team that put on uh, water shows. So I uh, 
joined right up, and so did my little sister, and we uh, went to uh, shows that she held them at almost every uh, place that they had a pool. The Hoya Beach Tennis Club, the Marine Base, the, the Navy Base, any, any place, the, um, the Coronado Navy Base, any place that had a pool, we went and put on a show and they really enjoyed it. <laughs> But Chadwick's experience in the aquacades and coaching categorized her as a professional, violating the required amateur status of Olympians at the time. Therefore, she was ineligible to compete in sanctioned meets, effectively ending her potential as an Olympic swimmer. But Florence never lost sight of her larger goals. She was inspired by Gertrude Adderley's record-holding swim of the English Channel, so Florence found a job with the Arabian American Oil Company, their location on the Persian Gulf provided the perfect training ground. Despite working full-time, Chadwick spent upwards of 10 hours a day in the Gulf before and after work, improving her fitness and stamina required to swim from France to England. It's certainly a tough contest, this channel swim. You've got to get started with your boat, you've got to stick it for at least 10 hours or so, and you've got to beat the tides. In June of 1950, at the age of 32, Florence quit her job with the oil company and made her way to France, where she hoped to be accepted to the Daily Mail Channel Swimming Competition. But as an unknown competitor, her entry was denied. Undaunted by the Daily Mail rejection, Florence trained through the month of July before attempting her first channel swim from Cape Grenet to Dover on August 8, 1950. At three o'clock in the morning, 17-year-old Shirley Mae France of Massachusetts starts on her race to be 12th woman to swim the English Channel. A brave attempt, but it is doomed to failure. At three minutes past four in the afternoon, watchers near South Foreland Point see 31-year-old Florence Chadwick end a record-breaking swim just 13 hours, 23 minutes after she left Cap Greenay. She took 71 minutes less than Gertrude Eddeley in 1926. She quickly made the Daily Mail regret their decision. Shattering Adderley's previous record of 14 hours and 31 minutes, Florence Chadwick swam the English Channel in 13 hours and 20 minutes, approximately 20 miles and over an hour faster than the previous record. Her pace required her to begin her attempt fighting an incoming tide, clocking in one stroke per second for the first section of her endeavor. In the calmer water, she relaxed to 48 strokes per minute before starting the final push through another violent tide. The last three miles took her over four hours to complete. Over the next four years, she successfully completed five more attempts, setting two more records. Hello. Well, needless to say, I'm very, very happy to have the men's record back again. And I can truthfully say, though, it takes a team to get across the channel. I don't care how good a swimmer you are, it does take a team. And I have been very, very fortunate in being blessed with excellent support. I can't say enough words of praise for my pilot here, John Burrow. He's greatly responsible for the record uh, the other night. He did a wonderful job, John. And of course, that goes for my team working every stroke of the way right with me. As far as uh, future swimming plans are concerned, I'm definitely not retiring. As far as my future work is concerned, well, all I can say is I'm anxious to take a, a rest and I'm very anxious to get back home to the United States. I've been gone for four months now and believe me, U.S. is going to look mighty good. She became one of the faces of women's athletics and toured the country teaching children to swim and promoting an athletic lifestyle. A dominant female athlete of the time, she was welcomed as a hero for her record in the United States, where she would appear on TV and radio programs. Well, wonderful. Actually, I would say that Miss Chadwick is more than one who swims the channel. If I remember the records correctly, you have brought back the channel record to the United States, haven't you? That's right. The England to France crossing uh, two weeks ago, October 11th. And what was the time? My new record is 13 hours and 55 minutes. That's a long time. <laughs> Just to make the record, how many other rather famous bodies of water have you swum across? Well, let's see. I have crossed the English Channel four times, the Catalina Channel in California, the Straits of Gibraltar in Spain, the Bosphorus in Istanbul, and the Dardanelles in Tinocoli, Turkey. Holiday. Yeah. Oh, wonderful oh, record. Miles, anyway. Wonderful <laughs> record. Well, thanks very much for being our guest. And I think we ought to give the panel a little fun now. 
They didn't have a chance to meet you before you came in, so would you say goodnight to the panel as you leave? I think they'd like to meet you. Very nice to have had you with us. Peggy, you should know who this is. Florence Chadwick. Yes. Florence holds the world's record for swimming the English Channel. The only woman ever to swim it both ways. Let's join her on the beach. Florence, how do you keep yourself in condition? By getting plenty of sleep, exercise, and the right kind of foods. And I drink chocolate-flavored Ovaltine. Remember, I said Ovaltine. In the prime of her career, Chadwick traveled the world attempting distant swims in some of the most challenging water the world had to offer. She was not just the best woman on the distance stage, she was the best distance swimmer at the time, regardless of gender. During her years as a channel swimmer, she held not only the women's record, but the men's time as well. Standing only 5 foot 6 inches tall and 140 pounds, doctors claim that she was unnaturally resistant to the cold. Many of her swims required that she cover her body in a thick layer of grease in order to keep warm. Now in her late 30s, Chadwick retired to become a stockbroker, but continued to swim and coach youth swimmers. In her own words, Chadwick was swimming, but now in a sea of finance. For a couple of summers, I think we had Florence Chadwick, mm -hmm. who was the first woman to ever swim the English Channel, right. come to Grossinger's and be the aquatics director. Right. And I think you asked her to watch me swim, yeah. and she thought I had potential, and she was training me to yeah. a long-distance swimmer, and we graduated from the Olympic-sized pool to the lake, where she was having me swim the lake back and forth many times, and I just couldn't stand the hook on the bottom of it. No, I can't. <laughs> to this day, but, I can't but, either. But, um, you know, it was, she really helped me a lot, and it was a fun thing to do. But I didn't know she was anybody other than a swimming teacher. Of course. Right. You know, just well, like we had... skating. Right. Just like we had, you know, big skating rink where I went to skate. She was inducted into the International Swimming Hall of Fame in 1970. Florence was also given the 1984 Living Legacy Award, inducted into the San Diego Hall of Champions and the Women's Sports Hall of Fame. Since the 1950s, all of Florence Chadwick's records have been broken. Improvements in technology, including radar and GPS, have helped swimmers navigate to find the shortest routes with minimal tides to improve upon their times. But Florence Chadwick put distance swimming and women's athletics on the map. Her unprecedented talent has inspired people across the globe to reconsider what they thought was possible, both for a woman swimming in the 1950s and for themselves in their own lives.